First, I would like to thank the organizer for making a room for my presentation today. And uh, <clears throat> I will try to present briefly kind of um, complex issue concerning the uh, how the media history was exploited for justification of territorial pretensions to Ottoman Macedonia in the first two decades of 20th century, which resulted in raising of the medieval ghost. Uh, I will focus on Tsar Samuel and Emperor Basil II, and uh, how they clashed, actually projectedly clashed in the contemporary Balkan Wars in 1912 and 1913. So to understand how history was exploited and even encouraged violence, we should look at first on the genesis of the rediscovery of the Middle past in the Balkan con context. Uh, <clears throat> the Balkan narrative uh, narratives largely ignored Tsar Samuel and Basil II until the mid 19th century. Uh, it was Russia who was directly responsible for the renewed interest in, in uh, uh, especially in this uh, legendary struggle, especially Samuel, Tsar Samuel. Uh, and uh, Alexander Hilferding, the eminent Russian historian credited with the initial formation of the historical memory of Samuel State, actually presented Tsar Samuel as a ruthless ruler who failed to unite the Slavs into a federation reflecting in a way uh, Russia projected contemporary ambition set to undertake the historical role of liberating its Orthodox Slavic brothers from the Ottomans. This projected historical message became relevant for the project of Greater Bulgaria that was shaped together with the Russian direct influence in the rediscovery of the medieval history of the Balkans and its subsequent involvement in the direct direction of the course of the narratives, especially of Bulgaria. This motive led to change of the Bulgarian image on Samuel, who through Russia educated historian Marin Dinov, was transformed from sinister, ugly Armenian into the national hero in 1870s. Greece also found the justification for this project Megale idea in mid 19th century with the incorporation of the Byzantine heritage and its key proponent Basil II with Konstantinov's Papyrigopoulos' work. The failure of the project of Greater Bulgaria and the revision of the Treaty of San Stefano in 1878 inevitably incited the nationalists to res resurrect Samuel and Basil's spirits, becoming the historical synonyms for Macedonia. As a result, towards the end of 1870s, 1870s Samuel State already became an integral part of the projected Bulgarian and Serbian nationalist concepts for legitimizing the historical right on the Macedonian territory. This evolved in the Greek nationalist discourse through the image of Basil II as national hero. Just a second. Uh, from the left, we can see the image depicted of Tsar Samuel, who was uh, by uh, 1870 perceived by the Bulgarian public as as uh, ugly Armenian who was uh, destined to be uh, uh, replaced or uh, defeated by by Russian uh, uh, Prince Sviatoslav at the time, and this message was projected. Uh, to to create an, uh, an impression that uh, Russia was. Uh, now uh, as a friend who will uh, liberate the Bulgarians in the 1870s. Uh, and from the right side, we, we have uh, uh, Basil II's uh, image. So indicately, Russia's special expeditions in Macedonia that took place in 1898 and 1900, were focused on defining the historical importance of Serbia and Bulgaria in the history and culture of the different places of Macedonia. It was uh, uh, like uh, the citation of, of uh, the report from the exhibitions. This clearly reflected the Russian political direction of the research that should result into the favorable for Russia resolution of the Macedonian question. 
The key discovery from these exhibitions, the serial inscription from the village German near Preska, promoted by Fedor Uspensky, signaled a historical shift in the interpretation of Samuel the Emperor and created favorable ground for adjusting the Balkan narratives about Samuel Emperor in the struggle for national consciousness in Macedonia. <clears throat> the Serbian historiography, historiographers immediately responded. Božidar Prokic, professor at the Department of Medieval Studies at Belgrade Grand School since 1908, promote, no, to, to, promoted the term Macedonian Slav Empire, arguing that Samuel State had no relation to the Bulgarian ethnic elements at all. Prokic even explained the impossibility of the Bulgarian conquerors in the uh, Middle Ages, intermixing with the subjected Slavs in Macedonia because of their ethnic dissimilarity. His key motive, however, emerged from his imagined ethnic ge geographical constellation in Samuel's Empire. Prokic concluded that in Macedonia, Empire, the Serbian element was the most powerful one. He determined that the Serbian-Bulgarian conflict over the Balkans uh, had been conceived in the ruins of Samuel's Empire arguing that within Samuel's extended emperor, the Serbian ethnic element dominated, Prokic projected the message who actually who populated Macedonian uh, in his time. The exploitation of history for proving who were the Slavs that inhabited Macedonia in the Middle Ages echoed the contemporary pretensions to the territory of Macedonia and the identity of its inhabitants. <clears throat> Prokic's conclusion coincided with the Serbian ethnographic theories of Jovan Svic about the Macedonians as a flotant mass. Svic stated that the Macedonian Slavs did not possess a distinctive national consciousness, despite the fact that Serbian culture had a significantly stronger presence than Bulgarian. He concluded that an enduring historian consciousness as regards the nationality of the Macedonians, however, had not been created. In other words, the Macedonians were yet to acquire historical and ethnic consciousness depending on who will secure control of the, the Macedonian territory. No, uh, uh, Svic admitted the Balkan state territorial aspiration in Macedonia predetermined the historiographical confrontation as they interpreted the past to legitimize their contemporary political projects. As he noted, he was actually throwing down to the Bulgarians a glove in Macedonia. Bulgarian <clears throat> geographer and ethnographer Vasil Kanchov responded with a counterclaim that the western part of the Bulgarian state in Macedonia during Samuel's time, uh, in fact, started to be called Bulgaria, although he died after the long struggles with the old enemies of Bulgarians. Hence, he, uh, he ex exemplified the historical of the Macedonian Bulgarians in maintaining the Bulgarian name and ethnic consciousness since the Middle Ages. Anastasi Shirkov and Jordan Ivanov followed this conception, sought to prove that the ethnic name Bulgarians were imposed on the Macedonian Slavs exactly during the Samuel's reign. Shirkov directly linked the final shaping of the Bulgarian character of Macedonia to Samuel Emperor. Jordan Ivanov, from his side, devoted his research to compile the artifacts in Macedonia. Accordingly, he sought to prove that everything discovered in Macedonia was Bulgarian. And as a result, Macedonia and its history were Bulgarian too. The Macedonian intelligentsia, disappointed by, uh, in the Russian policy and embittered by the propagandas of the neighboring countries, responded by presentation of the authentic historical expression of the Middle Ages. The initial direct connection with Alexander and Philip of Macedon from mid 19th century was replaced with resurrection of authentic Macedonian Samuel natural belonging to Macedonians. Thus they demonstrated their innate historical right to the territory. Krsta Petkov Misirkov, the leading Macedonian national ideologist, openly confronted the Serbian and Bulgarian propagandas with Samuel Macedonian autochtony in his 1903 book on Macedonian matters. Misirkov elaborated on his historical retrospection with the rhetorical question, can Macedonia turn itself into a separate ethnographical and political unit? Uh, he affirmatively answered, Misirkov identified Samuel as the central historical figure in legitimizing Macedonian distinctiveness, demonstrating the historical authenticity of the inspiration of, for political separation and national sovereignty. Misirkov efforts accompanied the clear identification of Samuel's state as Macedonian, 
with no slash attributes and no mention of ancient heroes. Mystique of historiographical concept was autochthonous and independent from the pan-Slavic historiographical world and Russian influence. With Mystique of narratives, Samuel was built into a Macedonian historical canon, which raised him to a symbol of medieval statehood and freedom they had yet to obtain. Understandably, Bulgarian professor Alexander Theodorov Balan stressed the danger of Mystique of Macedonian theory, theory, theory aimed to persuading his fellow brothers, Macedonians, that they should fight for their nationality, for their literary language, for their Macedonian culture. Theodor of Balan especially criticized Mystic of historical and political syllogism, which treated Macedonian Slavs since the Middle Ages as a distinct historical entity, and thus different from Bulgarians. Evoking the spirit of the Middle past inevitably accompanied the increasing certainty of a confrontation in the Balkans or Macedonia. <clears throat> Greece was certainly not indifferent over Balkan mobilization and the preparation for uh, an expected confrontation with the Ottomans over Macedonia. Embedding Basel and his struggle against Samuel into the Greek popular consciousness became an integral part of the political agenda. British historian Phil Helen William Miller stated in 1905 that the Greeks believed that Macedonia was their inheritance which was why they dream, dream of Basil the Balkan slayer, slayer smiting Tsar Samuel Hip and Thich. Meticulously contemplated propaganda spread the perception of Basil II as a national hero in the fight against the Slavophones in Macedonia. The Greek propagandists promoted violence and hatred in quelling the threat from Macedonia among the public, encouraging them to apply the same method with which Basil the Balkan slayer had been relentless and punitive when he exacted out with his own hand the price of divine justice. Even children went in death with this propaganda that implanted the consciousness of the historical greatness of the miracle, merciless Basil II. Penelope Delta's children's novels for Homeland's sake and in the time of the Bulgar Slayer in 1908, uh, 1909, 1911 clearly drew inspiration from Basil's military actions in Macedonia. Despite their clear cruelty from a modern perspective, these works best illustrate the essence of the Greek educational propaganda which sought to create and train new Bulgarian slayers modeled after Basil II. <clears throat> so, Theories Christie's propaganda posters from 1913 widely represent the way the Greeks projected the past into the contemporary struggle over Macedonia. In addition to depicting Greek soldiers blinding the Bulgarian army, the posters presented the actions of a Bulgar eater. In the peak of the battle, the Greek nationalists not only represented the Basil's merciful blinding, but also the classical annihilation of the enemy by any means necessary, including cannibalism. The new king of Greece, Constantine, who, su who succeeded his father, <clears throat> uh, George I, was presented in the Greek posters as victorious in the Balkan verse. Wars. The poster from 1912 depicts Constantine as a prince riding with the resurrection Byzantine Emperor Constantine XI. Other posters from 1913 contain celebration images of Constantine with captions reading the greatest of the Constantines, the Bulgar Slayer, etc. This message clearly demonstrated the history as a powerful weapon in the legitimacy to gain territories in Macedonia during the war. In such circumstances, the Macedonian intelligence appealed to the Russian public for their support were more an anticipation of the feared outcome rather than a real expectation that Russia would actually help. Beginning with Vasily Vasilevsky, the founder of the Russian School of Byzantology, Russian scholars including Spensky, Vasilev, Rosen, Lipovsky, embraced the thesis of the Bulgarian character of Samuel State. Russia continued to seek historical support for its own political agenda regarding the Macedonian question using history. The results of Kondakov expedition in 1909 report Macedonia, Macedonia Archaeology Chesko Putesvestvia clearly reflect Russia's interest. Although Kondakov raised several questions about the Macedonian Slavs contemporary ethnography, he noted that none of the historical sources on the Bulgarians or the Bulgarian Slavs ethnicity illuminated this period. However, he used the established 
uh, establishment of some state to demonstrate the close relation with the Bulgarian Strap, with the Slavs from Mokrit, and thus with the Slavs in Macedonia in general, more precisely speaking, validating the Eastern Bulgarian origin of the Macedonian Slavs. Kondalkov also connected the depiction of Basil, uh, Basil to, uh, the second to Samuel the feet of Clidian. Um, that would provide proof of the Bulgarian presence in Macedonia since the Middle Ages. Kondakov exhibition clearly revealed its political agenda and his remarks that only history, following all the specificity of the cultural life of the Balkan Peninsula, will give the key to the real resolution of the Macedonian question. He thus argued that the oldest Bulgarian emperor, meaning uh, Samuel State, chose as his first center Okrit and Prespa as the most important headmost points in the direction of the Slavs. In other words, Kondakov presented Okrit and Prespa as the historical cradles of the Bulgarians to support the contemporary Russian agenda that aimed to demonstrate that Macedonia belonged to Bulgaria. He concluded that every unbiased traveler should decide that all Macedonia should be given to Bulgarians with the exception of some of its northwestern past places adjoining to old Serbia. Completely opposing Macedonian autonomy, Kondakov also expressed the message that Bulgaria would disrupt historical and common sense if it opted to split Macedonia with Austria, which would result in Serbia's complete enslavement. Kondakov's interpretation provides a clear example of Russia using Samuel's reign as the main argument to justify Bulgarian rights to Macedonia and demonstrating its ethnic affiliations since the Middle Ages. On the eve of the Second Balkan War, uh, in, on June 9, 1913, an appeal in the Macedonians, Memorandum of Macedonians, published in the journal Makedonski Golos, issued in St. Petersburg, addressed the governments of the Allied Balkan states, demanding independence. The memorandum referred to the historical injustice done to Macedonia and Macedonians. On the journal cover, Chupovsky map of Macedonia reflected the political objectives. In his narrative, Chupovsky placed the autochthonous Macedonian Samuel as the center figure for to symbolize the Macedonian Slavs' freedom and unification. <clears throat> After the Balkan Wars, as Chupovsky emblematically presented, the Macedonian population did indeed carry the Triple Cross as uh, presented, depicted in the illustration uh, on the left side, which symbolized the territorial partition among the neighboring Orthodox Balkan states. The Peace Treaty of Bucharest, signed on August 10th, no, formalized Macedonia partition among the Greece, Serbia, and Bulgaria. Samuel and Basil the second were not left alone, though. The tensions over the unreal, unrealized national geopolitical goals in the, the Balkans remained so strong that no one expected the peace to last. The Balkan states sowing new opportunities for their unrealized territorial ambitions that again crossed in Macedonia. In his speech before the Macedonian representative at all Slav meeting in Odessa on August 6, 1914, Misirko stressed the need for Slav solidarity in the confrontation with the German drunk Nach Osten, arguing that Macedonia's historical right for unification and statehood on, basis, on the basis of Samuel's simple restoration as uh, divided as uh, uh, Second Poland. To conclude, and the exploitation of history as propaganda to spread the image of Samuel and Basil II as opposed national heroes that were raised to fight and the contemporary wars for Macedonia. As a, as a result, medieval heritage was exploited as a key argument for justification or a legitimizing territorial gains, turning into a question into a question of imposition of the identity to the contemporary inhabitants of Macedonia. This tendency endures even after more than a century concerning Macedonia. In my book titled Blind State, published in Brill in 2019, I conclude with the answer to the rhetorical question, how long the Balkans will be under Samuel and Basil shadow? And the answer is until the Macedonian question is finally settled, their ghost will be perpetually raised to the fight the imaginary name enemy. Until then, Samuel states will continue to be blinded and projected in the more the struggle for the medial legacy and the identity. Thank you very much.